County. It's uh, Roger Glenn coming to you with the July 2022 version of Mike Up the Mayor. Uh, and we're here with Mayor Kurt Cannon. But our special guest today is Mr. Greg James. It's always good to have two first names, a guy named Roger Glenn. Or two last names. Or two <laughs> last names, right? I appreciate that. And uh, who's the chairman of the Raven County Board of Commissioners. And one of Mayor Cannon's tenants of his campaign uh, and his tenure as the mayor was to increase the amount of cooperation with the county. So we thought, what better way to demonstrate that than to bring you two fine gentlemen together just to talk a little bit about what's happening this summer and how the city and the county are working together. So, Kurt, how do you think it's gone so far in terms of working with not only Commissioner James, but Chairman James, but uh, the entire Raven County Board of Commissioners and, and the administrators? It's going really well. Um, I think um, a, a totally different attitude of um, cooperation and, and, and from the very beginning I said, I've got family and friends inside the city, outside the city. We're all serving the people, not a particular little set. And anything the city does affects the county. Anything the county does affects the city. And so if we're both doing the right things for the right reasons, it's going to help everybody inside and outside the city limits. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yes. It's just our job to do what's best and, and that'll, you know, bring everybody up together. And we've we've talked previously about the joint sort of meetings that you've had. What are some other things that you're trying to do with the county that perhaps in the past were, were not quite connected? <laughs> well, well, a couple of big things. Of course, the SDS service delivery strategy was something the county and the city had been fighting back and forth over for a long time. And, and I, it was my goal to get that done the first month, and we did, and then we signed it the second month, and that's behind us and going fine. And then the next thing, of course, in, in water and sewer issues, um, and, and that's going really well. We're, we're cooperating on all levels now. We're going to each other's meetings, understanding what both are dealing with, um, our engineers are working with their engineers we're, we're we're actually doing some projects together now so um, and when we've had issues we call on each other and say hey come help and they've and the, the water authority and the county have both jumped in and, and helped us with the issues now if we could just get the state and the federal government that cooperating might, might not with you <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll keep it realistic uh, well, Chairman James, thank you for being here My today. Pleasure. I know it's a busy day because uh, you've got a, a meeting tonight, a yes, working sir. meeting, as well as the commissioner's meeting. So, But from your perspective, um, what are some of the things that, that you see as positive in terms of the direction that Raven County is going in cooperating with Clayton? And, and again, not only the mayor, but, but many of the administrators and other people. Well, and first of all, I'd like to say thank you to, to Kurt and the uh, council. Um, the, one of the things I think that was pretty simple that we asked for was to begin with an open mind um, and let's hear each other out. We found out we we have a lot more in common than we have that are not in common. So, um, and I'm of the belief that what's good for the city is good for the county and what's good for the county is good for the city and, and, and the cities. But um, it's been a breath of fresh air. Um, the when, when we meet uh, on uh, either turf, if you will, uh, it's it's welcome. It's it's almost gleeful, but it's of respect and 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 on, as far as I'm concerned, admiration for for the uh, for our people in those key positions in the city. And again, the key is the spirit of cooperation, and we certainly appreciate that. And it's getting to. Uh, we're beginning to reap great benefits because the, the hostages were the people that paid the taxes in the cities and the, and the counties, and that's not fair. Um, his job and my job is to get things done. One thing that I learned uh, early on, I don't know about you, Kurt, not speaking for you, but that when you get into public service, you realize 
if things move a lot slower than they did out there in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the private world. Uh, and uh, but you but you can't let up. You got to keep the full court press on and make things happen. And and I, I that's something I'm determined to get things done. Um, I think we got a good track record of showing that. And I'm beginning to see the same thing. Kirk knows working really hard to get some things done. And for the things that take take longer to get done, you just you just you just stay on. You have to be tenacious and 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 make things happen. And sometimes you got to wait on certain things to unfold. And that's just the way it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. From my days in the Department of Defense, we used to call that the speed of government. And we always <laughs> say you can't go any faster. Well, you understand what I'm speaking on. I, I absolutely do. Which, of course, at the county level and the city level, with things like roads, but many other issues, it does require the cooperation. I'm teasing about the state, but working with the state, you know, as well. So the better aligned that the city and the county are, I would imagine it makes it easier for the state to get involved when they have to. Absolutely, and, and again, you, you get things done when you understand what needs to be done. And so thus far it's worked out really well. Like I said, we've realized that we have certain things in common and that we agree on the pathway, so we, we move on. Yeah. We, we've also been going after state or federal grants and monies and stuff. Um, I don't know that this had ever happened before, but we're signing off on each other's requests. You know, and why wouldn't we? I mean, it's going to benefit all of us. And we're yeah. we're much stronger together as, as we are separate entities. And, yeah. and I can say that for the other municipalities uh, um, throughout Raymond County. And I'm, I'm proud of that because, again, collectively, you can get so much more done. Yeah. And I think the first is just trying to understand and agree on what needs to be done. And that's... Quite frankly, it's not been uh, as, as arduous uh, as some may think. Not not with uh, Kurt in the in the mayorship and the uh, and the council people, and we're very pleased. Yeah. Well, I know one of the things that both the the city and the county are working on, although different dynamics, is is planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. So maybe just a couple quick comments on. Uh, what the county's doing in terms of planning and zoning now, and then. Well, I, I, I've got to say, I, I would rather manage it than have it manage us. And there's <laughs> a little a little of both, but because we're seeing requests for things that we have never dreamt of. And yurts and tree houses and small houses and you name it and stuff, we get blindsided. So we're we are taking a long, hard look, and it's going to be a, a long, drawn-out, uh, arduous process. But we, again, as I mentioned earlier to you in private, that we got to start somewhere. And we have brought a group in um, that is helping us examine uh, what we're doing in planning and zoning. And uh, so we can prepare for what's happening to us now, what we can, may be able to anticipate happening in the future. So everything is has a cohesive uh, effort and dovetails nicely together and works well for the good of the entire community. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of times with zoning and planning, uh, it started with an initial charter, if you will, although mm -hmm. that's not the right terminology, but, and then people kind of add to it and you don't realize, but over some period of time, it's may not be very comprehensive, may not be very strategic to figure out where you want certain density for zoning, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, the first zoning goes back to 1974. And, and I think it's been maybe a bit of a hodgepodge as things unfold have unfolded since since then. And, and now we're seeing that there are some things that we've not done so well and that there are changes in the marketplace out there and that we do have some antiquated planning and zoning uh, that needs to be um, looked at and addressed and, uh, and, and hopefully have a happy result for all of our citizens. Yeah. Well, and I think uh, one of the things you've talked about this previously, uh, the benefits of having more uh, coherent zoning and planning is that then the citizens and the businesses understand what you can and can't do, what needs an exemption or a waiver, rather than everyone kind of groping around in the dark to some degree trying to figure that out on the fly well that's 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 very true and and i've had a lot of people ask ask me that uh, are they concerned what might be going up on the adjacent property to them and uh, so we have to have answers for that 
Because the, the answer in the, in the past has been, if you want to protect that piece of property next to you, you probably need to buy it. Well, that's not, that's not viable for some people. So they know what, the, what planning and zoning is, and it's part of our comprehensive plan. So what we want to be when we grow up, so to speak. And it makes, uh, it's, there's rhyme or reason to what we're doing. And uh, I think once, once we get this uh, accomplished, that that will um, hopefully have a comfort level that uh, is much better than it has been thus far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mayor Tannen, how do you see the city kind of nesting in what the county's doing in yeah, terms of planning zone? We're definitely dealing with some of the same things. We got a lot less land left to develop. <laughs> uh, I guess is our only saving grace at the moment. <clears throat> and all of those are, are basically under contract and ready to go at, right <laughs> now. Um, we are making some tweaks to ours. We're not taking as, as long a process. We had a pretty good document, but there's some things in here that just definitely needed addressed and we were cleaning those up uh, and then having someone from GMA to, to review what changes we're making to make sure that it doesn't conflict with something else or cause an unintended consequence and the mm -hmm. wording is legally correct. So before we vote on it to move it forward, but but we're already making some of those tweaks. We read some of them at our, our last meeting, and um, you know nothing real exciting. Just cleaning up little issues and things that that have arisen from some of the things we've just recently went through. Well, one of the challenges, kind of the local level, um, is that uh, when you transition from a municipality to county. It seems to, to many people rather arbitrary because you're driving down the road and there's a sign. <laughs> but to your point, um, there may be adjacent properties. Someone could live in the city, be adjacent to the county, vice versa. So what are your thoughts on uh, making those align uh, to kind of work in a, in a complementary manner with one another? Well, one thing that I, I have assured Kurt, and um, I don't know if I have the opportunity to do this for all the mayors and council people is um, we are have a pretty good investment with this group that's that's advising us on planning and zoning and it's a long again arduous drawn out process that we're certainly going to make sure that every 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 word every comma every period it, 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 anything that we um, analyze and take a look at uh, the cities are uh, are going to be privy to that information and they can do as they wish. They may want to change density to some degree. But I, I, I have a suspicion that by sharing this information and collaborating as we have, that there's going to be that cohesive effort again, right. um, not only throughout the county, but uh, dovetail with the cities as well. Right. Um, what's, what's your sense for a couple of the other municipalities in the, in the county and uh, not putting them on the spot or you on the spot, but in terms of how they can participate, you know, in this process or be aware of, of what's happening. Uh, will we see at some point a, a council of mayors that will meet with the commissioners, perhaps? Uh, be happy to meet with the mayors, any council people, um, and we can do that on request. Uh, we can set up meetings, and I'm not against that. I like the idea of it. Under Ford Raven, we do have an intergovernmental meeting uh, periodically where we, we talk about some of these issues, and we uh, find out again we have more in common than we don't. Right. And uh, yeah, I was going to say we're already doing that in the sense. So we are in the forward Raven. Too forward Raven. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, and, and we 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 can talk more down the road. And I know we've got a lot more to talk about as far as water and consumer consolidation. But I do I do worry about Dillard, for example. I do worry about Tiger because they have uh, the uh, they have water and sewer in certain areas. And we know that uh, history tells us that we can expect those to be booming areas to some degree because of that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. want to be poised for the growth throughout the county, including all, this, all the cities. I mean, the entire county, regardless of, of the uh, uh, whatever stamp you put on it from, it says, is it a county or right. municipality, that we are all working together. And, and, uh, and I'd mentioned um, as well, Kurt, something that, that is due here in October of 2024, that this all plays into is again, the comprehensive plan that I mentioned a little, little earlier. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what direction we go for everything from zoning and planning to, 
to growth and, and what we prepare for, what our future looks like, what we can expect. Um, and uh, we're going to be better as a result of gathering this information and sharing that information. And, and those uh, that may not be familiar with the comprehensive plan and the lexicon of, of county governance, that's sort of your strategic plan. It's your strategic plan. What, what you want to be when you, when you grow up. Right. Um, how, do we, how do we create jobs now? How do we give opportunities for my grandchildren to have uh, uh, jobs here in, in, in this county? Um, so, I mean, how, uh, how we handle health care. Um, how we handle building in terms of commercial and residential and anything in between and how all that works together and 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 it requires a lot of work but it, it uh, and, and one of the great things about it is we have meetings and public meetings that this information is shared with us so it's my job and our jobs as officials to to put all this together and again determine what we're going to be when we're when we're growing up one of the things we've talked about with Kurt in the past is um, transparency and uh, talking about the number of, of meetings and boards that are open to the public. And um, the, in many cases, they can participate in those. They may have intellectual uh, capital to contribute to discussions because of the experience. We've got a lot of retirees who have worked in some of these areas on specific issues you know, for years prior to retiring and things like that. So, and I think that's pretty much true for the county as well. It, it is. We found out there that um, throughout the county, we're uh, a part of our retirement community and elsewhere, that we've got people that have experience and some high level experience and uh, not too many things that, uh, uh, subjects that are thrown our way that we can't find somebody that might can give us some great food for thought. Yeah, my uh, friend uh, Lee Penland mm -hmm. uh, at the Lake Burton Civic Association, the gov governmental affairs liaison, is always walking around talking about the intellectual capital, you know, of that That's particular well said. constituency. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, meanwhile, at the less interesting level, there's a lot of blocking and tackling going on at the city, just in terms of public works and doing some things. Anything in particular you'd like to, to highlight? We We've been trying to do a, a lot of different things. There's several big issues that I found that were in water and sewer that for some reason they just were kind of sitting on and not doing. I think they were being kind of micromanaged to a certain degree with some people that were there in the past. And um, I've told Jason, let's, let's identify the issues, uh, find where the money is to do it. We've already got the money, let's do it. What are, what are we waiting on? Let's get it done. And, and you've seen us doing all kind of stuff around town, uh, some right in the middle of 76 and 441 and replacing some culverts and you know just getting a bunch of stuff done. Uh, of course, our t money money's coming in at a rapid rate. Uh, so we're, we're identifying roads and gonna start paving a lot in the city. Um, so so the, the pothole culverts can can back off a little when we start putting new <laughs> asphalt on their roads. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, um, a lot of stuff that's going on and, and a lot more coming. Um, we've got a, a subcontractor that works on water things with us at the city and I've, I've asked them to let's just, let's get here and let's work on um, some, some of these leaks and issues instead of just going and looking for the leak that was reported Let's go look for leaks everywhere and let's, let's fix them. And, and then figure out other ways that, um, and we've identified some of these, that, and we'll be talking more about this at our next meeting. Um, there's a lot of water leaks, or what we would call unaccounted for water loss, that is not necessarily running down on the ground. It might be running into somebody's house without a meter. Mm. So, so we're fixing to release some things and, and give uh, a little amnesty and opportunity to come and turn yourself in and buy yourself a meter before you get charged. Mm, interesting. Just because that's actually a felony. It's a theft of utility. Um, so you could face some serious consequences if called. And it's not real difficult to look at the tax records and say, OK, 
okay, there's a house here and it doesn't have a water meter. Why? <laughs> um, and so we're, we're fixing to go after some of those as well. Makes sense. How about, how about the county? I mean, this is salacious. I didn't anticipate something as interesting as water felony. <laughs> that, that's a serious matter. Put the word out for all those water thieves out there that water wars are coming in Clayton. But. Well, we want people to get what they pay for, but pay for what they get, if you, exactly. if, if, if you will. And, and um, <laughs> consolidation of water and sewer is something that Kurt and I have talked about. We know we've got a lot of uh, deep conversations to be had regarding that uh, that subject, but it's horribly important because there's some basic things you have to have for growth, and growth coming where we we like it or not, because the population's increasing, people are going elsewhere, and it's gonna it's gonna happen to us, but we got to be poised and ready for it, and I think uh, collectively that we'll get that done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's a lot of more issues, even more that I've I've found since being in in office is that. Um, one of those example, and I don't think we've even talked about it, is is we have a, an enormous number of septic tanks in the county. Sure do. The city really doesn't have any, but the city treats all the sewage from those septic tanks because they bring it and dump it into, which causes some issues. It causes your elevation of bacteria and stuff to either go way up or way down when you when you dump those in. Um, and try to treat them. So because we have such a large number and it's growing, you know, we got to figure out ways to handle that and to treat that mm -hmm. because you can't just keep dumping it in as our uh, usage goes up at our, you know, city plant. Um, and then you add that into it in, in large loads, it, it really throws the system off. So we got to figure out ways to, to handle that better in the future and maybe maybe even up at some of the larger facilities that are up in, uh, in Ragged Gap, it might be a better fit up there. We don't know where to put any, any other facility. Right. And, and we, the county has uh, acquired a piece of property on the south end. Right, right. And we were very lucky and fortunate to find it because it's the only b a piece of body of water, if you will, that is not designated as a trout stream. So mm -hmm. we, we purchased that land knowing that we're gonna need it for south side growth and for relief of some of these septic issues on the lakes, mm -hmm. um, and so we're we know that's a few uh, a few years off, but it, it, we've been told by EPA when we went down and, and spoke with them in Atlanta, EPD rather that uh, that the water that would come out of that facility would be cleaner than the water that goes into it. They told us that themselves, um, and we you know we have to look at funding and and that sort of thing, but. Uh, we're looking way down the road. I mean, we've got to think about today and tomorrow, next year, but we've got to think about what's going to be happening for the next couple of generations and even further. Yeah, getting ahead of the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, not to shamelessly plug our YouTube channel, but we have an interesting video with Tom Schmidt, sort of the preeminent soil scientist here in Raven County and really all of North Georgia, talking about septic health. So if you're interested in septic, uh, all kidding aside, there's some things that you can do in terms of the health of your own septic system at home. So, we, we are blessed in the county to have the water sources that we have that are way more than most any community could ever find. We, we, <laughs> we, we have, you know, of course, we have a continental divide that comes through here. And on the south side, we have the water withdrawal permit from Lake Raven. On the north side, from the Little Tennessee, and the permit to transfer it from one side to the other, which I don't know that there's any permits like that in anywhere. And that's something we're discussing tonight. We'll be voting on something. We're looking at putting redundancy lines in so we can we can take water from the north, deliver it to the south, do it in a full circle or vice versa. Yes. And uh, in any direction. So if we have, as we're experiencing growth or we have outages or we have to have maintenance that we're going to be we're going to be able to deliver good clean healthy water yeah and if you don't know about the continental divide darren giles can tell you all about it he, tell you, he, he can tell you everything you want he's a bona fide <laughs> subject matter expert on that. <laughs> <laughs> well gentlemen i know you're both very busy thank you for the time you spent today getting together and then on behalf of the citizens of Rabe county and clayton for trying to work together uh, more closely to 
achieve the highest possible return on investment to the taxpayer. How does that sound? Sounds great. Exactly. Well said. Okay. Well, if you'll join me now, this is the only obligatory part. I always wave and say, we'll see you next time, Raven County. See you next time. <laughs>